Okay, here we are in video three, and I thought I'd run the game first just to give an example of what this particular video gets you to. So, what's your name? I can type Josh. I've implemented a single command, and that command is look. And if I type look, it gives me a room name. It, it goes through and it lists four description lines, and it tells me what the exits are south and north. Okay, now we can't do anything at this point with that information, but it is listing the information in the room. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, how how we get there. Okay, um, up at the very top of game. Well, let's go to game objects first. Inside of game objects, we first want to add an array list, and it's a static array list, and it's going to be of type room. So this array list is only going to contain room objects. Uh, that makes our life a little easier. You can create a generic array list of just any kind of object, but then you have to cast every one that you take off the stack. And in this case, if we say they're all rooms, it just makes life a little easier because we know we want this array list to be rooms. I find that to be a little easier. And it's going to create a new array list of type room that we're going to start adding rooms to. Okay? So you want to have this line inside of game objects. Okay. Uh, so inside of game logic now, in the constructor method, the first thing I do and eventually we'll be modifying this uh, so that we don't have to create rooms like this. We'll be creating rooms in a text file. Um, you don't need to do, you don't do this now, but I'll show you uh, later on. We'll have a text file that'll contain all the rooms with descriptions and exits, and that way you just add it here and it will automatically get dropped into your game. But just to get started, uh, we're going to add one room manually. Okay, and so I say room.add new room and we pass it the number one. Now remember, room, let's look at room as we go through, takes a constructor of an integer. All right, and wrong room, wrong program. And it takes an integer x and the number is set to x right now. Okay? So room is going to be room number one. right? And then we're going to start using our um, array list of rooms that we created in uh, objects. And we're going to start populating that. So we're going to say room.get0. This is important, especially once we get to looping to understand how this works. We're going to get the room that is on the array list at position zero. In other words, the one we just added. OK? Um, And, you know, if, well, I'll do that later, but right now it's, we know it's zero. And we're going to set the name of that room to floating in space. And then we're going to get the room at position zero, and we're going to add a description. Remember, description is also an array list inside of room, so this is a list within a list, right? And uh, we're going to add a line to the description array inside of room called one, two, three, four. So we just add four of them. You can add as many as you like or as little as you like. And once again, inside of room, we have another string array that is called exits, and it contains a list of strings at different positions. And we're just going to manually add two exits, and we're going to say exit add south linking to two, north linking to three. OK? So this will create a new room right when game logic is created. And remember, inside a simple RPG, we create an instance of game logic. So when this happens, the very first thing that happens in the game pretty much, well, definitely, because we're creating it, is the constructor for game logic gets called, and we add a new room. So that is the first thing that happens in the game with all this stuff. All right? Now, once we have that, we're going to implement the look command. All right? And the look command. Here, first of all, we come down to process command, and we're going to start to look at what's being typed. And the process command does accept the string array that was split from what the user typed. And we're going to look at the first index, which what I typed here was, you can see down here, look is exit position 0. And if it equals look, we're going to call look command. And once again, we're going to pass it the entire array that was typed in. So if they type look troll, this will get look at position 0, troll at position 1. All right, so now let's look at the look command and how it works. Now this is where you really want to try to wrap your head around it because we're going to be doing a lot of this in the game to make it um, 
flexible, and easy to build. We have to start looping through our array lists and pulling things out that we want, all right? So if x.length equals one, in other words, if the user only typed in one word, just look, the string array itself only has a position zero, we're gonna do this, all right? Um, and we're gonna create a for loop for int i equals zero, i is less than game objects.room.size, and the room.size right now is just one because we've only added one room. We're now gonna loop through all the rooms in the game, okay? Now, if the room number is set to the same number that the pc.in room is set to, and when we created the PC, we set in room to one, and we created our first room with the room number one, well, that's gonna match right now, all right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna print the name of the room because the room number is one, it has found the first one on the stack, the room number matches the room you're in, let's print the name, okay? And the name is floating in space, that's what I gave it. And now we're gonna need a, a loop here to loop through all the descriptions in the room. So I'm gonna create a separate loop. Int y equals zero, y is less than gameobjects.room.getI. So we're getting the first, the room on the stack that we've identified. And now we're going to create a loop that is the size of the description array list in that room. And we're gonna loop through each line of the description and we're gonna print it. System.out.println, gameobjects.room.get, get the room that's been found, all right, and print every description line in that room. All right, if I come down here and I type look, you can see it's doing that, it's printing the name. All right, and then it's looping through all the descriptions in the room and it's printing line one, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna print the word exits, which I do here. And now we're gonna loop through all the exits in that room and we're gonna print the, um, just the word. So we're gonna get the size of the exits array in the room. All right, we're going to create an array out of that because the exit has two words, right? North space three. All right, and we're going to split the the full, you know, north space three into an array that has two positions, and we're just gonna print the first one, in this case, just the word. So we see exits south and north. Now, eventually, we can look at one and see two or three and figure out where we wanna go, but we're not there yet, okay? So there's your look method, and right now, when you type look, it just prints the room you're in and all the descriptions that have been entered for that room. Okay? Once you get that moving, it's uh, working. It's time to move on to uh, video four. And we'll begin to add some more functionality. Take a look at this looping concept, looping through rooms and then looping through lists within those rooms. Uh, if, if you've got that concept, um, most of what we're going to do here uh, should be a lot easier. So take a look at that. Okay, thank you.